Kiara. The foothills of the Appalachia mountain range, the Tennessee River, which is dammed repeatedly, so there's beautiful lakes there. Y'all. Can I get a y'all? That's a southern for hi, y'all. <laughs> Key fact. $50 trillion is passing hands from my generation to your generation, younger people. In the next three decades, in North America alone, it's got to be $100 trillion, $200 trillion globally. Think about that. Trillions is passing hands. New generation, new values, new times, global urgency, social, environmental, political. We've got to mobilize that money in the correct way. Besides inheriting a, a decent amount of money from an entrepreneurial family, Jews from Russia, Poland, Germany, my people have moved around the world a lot, mostly to get away from oppression, sometimes for opportunity. So I inherited some of the benefits of a, of a successful next-generation immigrant entrepreneur. I became an entrepreneurial investor early on. There was another inheritance that I got, which was a family genetic kidney disease that went through my father's lineage. Most many of, the, of those people died from that kidney disease. I was diagnosed early and told that I could die soon and there wasn't anything to do about it. I didn't like that diagnosis. I was frustrated about it. But death is actually an excellent teacher. Keep remembering death and use it. I thought about a lot of things to try to deal with that uh, diagnosis. And the summary was, what does the kidney do? It filters the blood. So what if I eat cleaner food? What if I put cleaner things in my body? I translated that to the money side. How could we possibly sustain money that's not also on the pathway to clean? Clean blood, clean money, longer survival for me. But it's a good metaphor. I inherited some privilege. From entrepreneurial investor, another opportunity came through an early network like this, called the Threshold Foundation. It was mostly people that had inherited money, but some that had made money, thinking about the issues around money. And I began to get influenced by other mentors the way that you are here, that money could be the most powerful force for actually doing good in the world if we used it very intentionally. I consider myself at this point a social change investor, doing social change through using business money and finance. My next big opportunity was to work with an extraordinary woman named Carol Newell, who had inherited a lot more money. She wanted the majority of that put out into good deeds in the world while she was alive today. <coughs> she kept enough to stay comfortable, but I was invited to strategize and deploy $70 million over, uh, over about 14 years, focused in our region of British Columbia. I migrated. We did investment, activism and not-for-profit, leadership and inner skills, and politics. Ignore politics at our peril. We were inspired by a 500-year question. We started our work around the 500th-year celebration of Christopher Columbus's great discovery. That led us to a 50-year thinking, a human lifetime, human working lifetime. What could we do in 50 years with our ingenuity, our capital, and our intentions to contribute towards a better long-term future? 
Natural systems were the model. I don't think I need to explain that here. Integrated capital is how we talked about our strategy. Using every dollar multiple times, as many times as possible, to cause good outcomes. Today, I'm part of another fellowship like this called the Integrated Capital Institute, which is attempting to get people prepared for the massive amount of capital that is shifting towards dedication to do good in the world, but not many people are trained for this multi-dimensional kind of work with money, including the psychological, the emotional, and the spiritual. What are our dollars doing right this minute to people and places? Our global world religions and other forces have an, an allowed us and blessed us to ignore that question. That's not right. Every single one of us needs to think about our purchases, our investments, our banks, our insurance companies, and everything that we do that can influence money. Because at the other end of that money, a lot of people and places are suffering pretty severely. Ignoring that is wrong, and it's our responsibility to reclaim that responsibility. When I thought about meaning and purpose, what was I going to do as the life of a white kid in the South uh, who had inherited a little money and was getting involved in those things? Spending time to understand what my values, my meaning and purpose in life actually were was essential. We all have to do that, and we have to revisit it regularly through life. I was fortunate that a Greenpeace activist, the uh, editor of the Greenpeace newsletters, gave me her kidney 10 years ago. I think that that might have come from the commitment. Uh, the, the model that was available to me when asking those questions about meaning and purpose in this era was become a billionaire. That's what, that's what real success is. I didn't like that model, but I thought the billionaire image was okay. But how about being a billionaire of good deeds? How about being a billionaire of love? A billionaire of great relationships? A billionaire of generosity? That money that we have, we're pro we likely have a piece of forced labor, poisoning other people's children, and starting wars. Keep asking that question. In my lifetime, and lots of years here, global population has doubled from under 3.5 billion to over 7 billion. That's part of the global crisis. And that's what we're facing. That's a really important thing we're facing in the future and a huge challenge. We have to move trillions of dollars from damage and destruction to regeneration. We are some of the luckiest people on the planet alive because we get to have these conversations and be in this kind of communion and helping each other along. We have to have a feminization of the economy. We need an inclusivization of the economy. And we need a spiritual evolution that will help us. In, you've, we've had so many wonderful speakers here to reclaim meaning and purpose and all parts of life to be dedicated as our ancestors did to be ancestors of what's coming. That's our biggest responsibility. We've got deep green to venture capital here in the room. A very enlightened group. Again, that makes us some of the luckiest in the world. We each have a big role to play. We have to have a clean, green, safe, fair economy going forward. That's our job. Our responsibility as ancestors. We are ancestors, whether bloodline or not. We are ancestors. People are studying this period. We alive today are the first 
to be alive that had the power to damage and destroy as much as we do now. That never existed. So civilization has advanced, great, great technology, all kinds of great learnings. But the responsibility now is heavier than ever. We are the ancestors. They are going to be looking back to find out what we did while we had this power, authority, and privilege to be sure that there was a long-term, decent future for everyone. Thank you so much for your work and your attention. <laughs>